Hey, and welcome to Board with Life News for April 4th. Today I'm going to talk about Gloomhaven Forgotten Circles, Epoch Early Inventors, Beta Colony, Monopoly Gamer Mario Kart, Welcome To, and the Kickstarter for Fireball Island. Let's get to it. Gloomhaven Forgotten Circles is the first expansion for the smash hit game Gloomhaven. Uh, this takes place after the events in the Gloomhaven campaign for anyone who somehow finished that like massively long hundreds of hours campaign. Uh, it's going to have 20 new scenarios involving um, a new character class, the Aether Diviner? Esther Diviner? I tried to look it up. This is a made up thing. I don't know. A-E-S-T-H-E-R. How do you say that? Aether? Aether? Uh, it has seven new monster types, including three bosses, uh, 14 new items, and it is going to cost 30 bucks. and it's not going to Kickstarter, it's going to direct to retail, so keep an eye out for that. It should be out around Essen this year. Epoch Early Inventors is a new game coming out from Rio Grande Games. In it, you are basically following the flow of history from the dawn of civilization all the way through the Bronze Age. You're exploring, developing tools, making offerings to holy places, really standard euro -y fair stuff. Um, which is obviously fine with me, but, you know, sounds like a pretty standard Euro. I will say, the box cover... So the box cover clearly has a negative area at the top where you would normally put the title of a game. Like, there's... It's a very kind of clean palette. There's not a lot going on. But the title of the game is in very small, hard-to-see text at the bottom of the box, which I don't think was the intent of the illustrator. It feels like they went... Yeah, let's do a cool thing after they had already told the illustrator, yeah, we're going to have the title at the top of the box where you expect. Let's do a cool thing and not put any title on the front of the box and just have artwork. And then they like went like, ah, no, we should put a title. But maybe if we make it small, but they put it in the wrong area. So it's, it's bothersome. I'm going to be honest. It's bothersome. Beta Colony is another game coming out from Rio Grande Games. Uh, in this game, you are directors trying to create prosperous colonies so that you can be elected the first leader of Victus, whatever that is. So, a sci-fi colony building game. Uh, it uses a roll Dell system, uh, which is basically a rondel mixed with dice where uh, there are central dice rolled and then everyone kind of picks how those are going to be allotted. Um, one of them is going to be the number that advances the rondelle that many spaces on your personal board, and the other is going to be uh, what activates whatever space it lands on. Um, dice color and stuff can change activation, stuff like that. So that sounds really interesting to me. I like rondelles a lot. I like dice placement games, so this sounds like a system that I'm very interested in exploring. It should be out this month. Monopoly Gamer Mario Kart is headed this way. Uh, so a couple, like a year ago, there was a game that came out called Monopoly Gamer, and it was Monopoly mashed up with Mario characters. And from, I've never played it, but the board game geek community, the hobby community, seemed to think that it was not bad. Like, not the best game in the world, but people seemed to really enjoy it. Um, they said that it basically wasn't Monopoly, it just kind of had the visual look of Monopoly. Um, <coughs> and that that game was already pretty Mario Kart-esque, so now it seems like they're just continuing with that and actually making a Mario Kart Monopoly Gamer game. Uh, the game is going to come with Mario, Peach, Luigi, and Toad as your characters, but you can buy power packs that c it will include Bowser, uh, Rosalina, Shy Guy, Metal Mario, Donkey Kong, and Yoshi. So this seems like one of those good games for you've got kids that really like Mario, or you've got family that wants to play Monopoly, and you're like, please, anything but... Um, yeah. Welcome 2 is a game that came out at the end of last year in Europe and is being brought over to the U.S. by Deepwater Games. Uh, it is a roll and write, or more aptly a flip and write game, kind of like uh, Avenue, if you've played that, where instead of rolling dice and then writing on your pad the results, you're flipping cards over and then picking how to allot those to your pad to write your results. Um, in it, your architect's designing three different streets. You're competing to design three streets, the best version of three streets, I guess. Uh, it has a pretty interesting mechanic where you have three stacks of cards and you flip the top card of each of the three stacks and on the back that you've revealed of uh, the stack of the cards there's going to be a number and then on the front of the card that you flip um, there's going to be an action. So you pick one of those three action number pairs um, to use, which uh, I like that a lot. It seems fun. It seems pretty clever. So I'm excited about this because I like roll and write games. This week's Kickstarter is for Fireball Island from Restoration Games. Restoration Games has been killing it, taking old games that had some interesting stuff to them and some nostalgia to them, but weren't kind of modern mechanics. They weren't 
particularly fun by today's standards, and in reinfusing those with kind of the modern mechanics that we are used to now that have kind of improved upon iteration after iteration of games. So Fireball Island was their number one most requested game to restore. It was obviously a behemoth beast because it's this giant vacuum formed board with marbles rolling around it and stuff like that. Um, and it's also not a fun game. Like, not saying you can't have fun playing it, but the game itself is pretty random and, and whatever. It was a game that we always busted out, like, way late at 2 or 3 in the morning when everybody was already tired and frustrated uh, with gaming, and then we just screamed at each other over a children's game. And it was a lot of fun. The game itself, though, not great. So they've completely, from the ground up, switched the mechanics around. It has the same core of you're moving around this island board, there are these marbles that roll down and knock your characters down, but they've cleaned up the design a lot, uh, so there's a little bit more strategy, a little bit more um, kind of gamerness to it. The board is itself is much, much bigger. It's just crazy. It looks like they've done a fantastic job at remaking this game, and it kind of tickles me that the Kickstarter is clearly going to make over a million dollars for like an 80s children's game. Um, but if you're interested in that, it is $60 right now on Kickstarter. All right, that's the news for this week. Thanks so much for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe to this channel and make sure you follow me on social media. I'm at Chris Bryan Games on Instagram and Twitter. Also, make sure you check out my Patreon that's linked below because uh, I can't make this without my uh, support of my lovely patrons. Uh, last week, for my $3 and up uh, backers on Patreon, I released my monthly design vlog where I talk about... Um, my game designs and kind of what goes into them and some of my thoughts on game design. Next month's is going to be pretty cool. I'm going to take a game Darwinots that I've been working on for over three years and kind of go through the entire progression from idea to what it is now, um, which is obviously a pretty long journey. Uh, also next week for all of my backers $1 and up, I'm going to release my What's on My Table video, which is I talk about the games I've been playing in the past month and my thoughts on them. It's like little mini reviews of the games I've been playing. So. Yeah. This week's question comes from at Roaming Academic, and they ask, what is your favorite mechanic in a game that fits perfectly with the theme? So first off, let me preface this by saying the thing in games I enjoy is not feeling like I'm doing the thing. Uh, that's a thing that can add to my enjoyment, but it's not that I want to like, I don't play like a dungeon crawler wanting to feel like I'm actually going through a dungeon fighting monsters, because I'm going to be honest with you, I don't feel that way when I play dungeon crawlers. The things that I most enjoy about games are interesting interactions of mechanics, new ideas for kind of things to do in that game space. So I am not at all like a theme first gamer. Uh, that being said, there are a couple of games where I very much feel like the mechanics lend to that. I think there's a certain category that's almost cheating, like not cheating, but in its own category, like space cadets, where you're frantically trying to do stuff and help other people and you're doing your own little thing, and that very much feels like you're on the deck of the Enterprise, and you're under attack, and all that kind of stuff. But that's using, like, actual real-time panic to make you feel real-time panic, um, where I think the game that I think most makes me feel like I'm doing the thing in the simplest, cleanest way is Flamme Rouge, which, as you, if you watch this, you know I'm a huge fan of Flamme Rouge, but... I actually, so it's an incredibly simple game. I think the deck thinning mechanic very much replicates, like you've basically got this much energy in your body. You get to choose when you push and use it, but once you've used it, it's gone. You're not gonna get it back. You're not gonna get re-energized. Um, and then I think the slipstreaming mechanic um, in an incredibly simple way replicates at the simplest form um, actual strategy for bike racing where you don't wanna be in front the whole time. You want to be drafting off people that conserves your energy, it makes you more efficient, then you want to pick the perfect time to break away from the pack so that they can't slipstream off you, stuff like that. So I think that there is, like, again, at its most, like, condensed, distilled, smallest form, um, some of the strategy of bike racing with just the cleanest, simplest, easiest to understand mechanics. Um, so that game, for me, is just a perfect blending of theme and mechanics, and uh, someday I might design a game that good, but probably not. Um, all right. Uh, thanks for your question. That was a great question. And I will see you next week. <laughs>